Hey YouTube, I'm Nick from Nick282K and today I'm going to show you how to take awesome photos like this one using a panorama head like the one I showed you in my last video. The first thing you have to do is set your, your camera up so that the nodal point of your lens is on the axis of rotation in both directions for your head. This means that as you turn your camera there is no point in the image that moves relative to each other. That's called parallax error and that's what makes uh, most panoramas not work out. When you try and stitch two images that have parallax error, they're not identical, so they won't overlap properly. So here I'm setting up my camera where I can just see the vertical direction at the edge of the frame. I know vertical is straight down through the bottom of my tripod. I'm going to take four pictures that are 90 degrees apart because that gives me just enough overlap that when the software looks at the images, they'll only be, uh, they'll only cover each other over about this much at the edge. So I'm going to go into uh, photo mode, take uh, four photos with the vertical direction down. After I take those, I'm going to rotate the camera so that I can see the vertical direction up right here and take four more photos at 90 degrees apart. That means when I put all these pictures into the software, it'll cover every direction, 360 degrees around and 180 degrees around. Some other things you should keep in mind when you try and shoot panoramas like this is uh, the wind. Anytime you have wind and things are moving, it'll make uh, differences from one picture to the next. Uh, the other thing is, make sure there's nothing in your frame that uh, you don't want to show up later. This panorama is going to have my B camera in it because I had it filming as I was taking the pictures. Now it only takes me eight photos to cover the whole uh, 360 degree, 180 degree sphere, but uh, you might find something different. I'm using an 8 millimeter lens that's uh, on a 1.5 crop camera, so I could probably do it in four, but I find if I use eight, I don't miss anything. If you have uh, a camera with a smaller sensor, or you're using a, a longer lens, like a 10 or an 18 millimeter lens, you'll have to use uh, more photos to cover the whole area but as long as you've set up your tripod properly it doesn't matter how many photos you take they're all gonna line up at the edges all that's left now is to stitch your individual photos into a single panorama Google for spherical panorama software and you'll find quite a few options I'm using the open source software called Huggin or Hoogan if you check out their website, there's tutorials, and there's plenty of other tutorials on YouTube that'll do a much better job at explaining the software than I will. The only advice I have is to make sure you look into cropping and masking the photos before you stitch them. This will let you eliminate the shadow made by your tripod uh, where you don't see any, any of the uh, ground underneath you. So here's the final product, the panorama that you watched me shoot earlier in this video as well as another one that I shot before I had left the, left the location. The second one was shot using my infrared camera and uh, I really like the way the infrared and spherical panoramas go together. It's a really surreal combination. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it kind of spurs an interest into uh, messing around with panorama photography. Uh, I, really, I really didn't think it would be as fun as it was until I tried it and since then I've been hooked. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and uh, look around YouTube and Google a little more about spherical panorama photography. There's a lot of really interesting stuff out there. Thanks for watching. Bye.